There's lots of big ideas, but big ideas that can actually be turned into a tangible, juicy experience for our audiences are you know, usually few and far between. Working with an organization like Gladstone, um, with a lab like Bruce's, is actually a great generative relationship because it keeps us thinking about the science that's happening out in the world. What are scientists thinking about? What are the problems they're trying to solve? What are the phenomena you know, that they're grappling with in the lab? And then we can think about how do we, how do we take those big ideas and extract from that what the public can actually experience. Responsive Heart Cells was a, a particularly interesting case of how, how an exhibit actually happens at the Exploratorium. Um, it was proposed by a scientist from Gladstone uh, many years ago. At the time, I thought, that's brilliant, and other people thought, that's impossible. I mean, how can you say it's not going to work if you don't give it a shot? So um, we tried it. It took years of fiddling in the lab to try to figure out how to take protocols developed at Gladstone and adapt them to the exploratorium environment so that we could do them in our lab. This exhibit is exciting and fun for me because it's it's complicated scientifically and biologically. It's an intense system. It's fun. It's fun because we're, we're doing things that haven't been done before. It's fun also because of the people that we work with at the Exploratorium who are really terrific and are just always sort of up for a new adventure. It's so easy for people to look at something and maybe kind of nod their head and go, oh yeah, okay, got it. But all of the work that goes into it, and this, this exhibit's a perfect example, whenever I give somebody a lab tour or a behind the scenes um, experience or give them a detailed explanation of what goes into that exhibit working properly for visitors, they're always amazed and blown away. 